Welcome to another lesson as we cover Alzheimer's disease. What is Alzheimer's disease? Well, Alzheimer's disease is a progressive, irreversible form of dementia that develops over many years. To characterize the condition and its manifestations, a seven-stage framework was developed. The framework is divided into three sections, early, middle and late stages. Dementia is characterized by a number of cognitive deficiencies that affect memory, language, motor abilities and abstract thinking. The percentage of dementia caused by Alzheimer's disease ranges from 60% to 90%. After diagnosis, the average survival time is about 10 years. However, some people might live with a condition for up to 20 years. Clients in their 60s and 70s are most prone to develop Alzheimer's disease. It can, however, be detected as early as the age of 40. Age, sex and heredity are all established risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, which typically strikes people after the age of 65. Memory loss, judgment issues and personality changes are all symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. As the disease advances, serious physical deterioration follows, as does a loss in cognitive abilities. Stages of Alzheimer's disease Each client's Alzheimer's disease progression may be distinct. While there is no common scale for the stages and manifestations, here is one example. Mild Alzheimer's, which is the early stage. Memory lapses, losing or misplacing items, unable to remember material just read, still able to perform AVLs, short-term memory loss noticeable to close relations, Trouble remembering names when introduced to new people. Moderate Alzheimer's, which is the middle stage. Forgetting events of one's own history. Difficulty performing tasks that require planning and organizing, such as paying bills or managing money. Difficulty with complex mental arithmetic. Personality and behavioral changes. Appearing withdrawn or subdued, especially in social or mentally challenging situations compulsive, repetitive actions, changes in sleep patterns, can wander and get lost, can be incontinent, clinical findings that are noticeable to others. Severe Alzheimer's, which is the late stage, losing the ability to converse with others, assistance required for ADLs, incontinence, losing awareness of one's environment, progressing difficulty with physical activities such as walking, sitting and eventually swallowing, eventually loses all ability to move, can develop stupor and coma, death frequently related to choking or infection, vulnerable to infection, especially pneumonia, which may become lethal. Assessment Tools such as mini mental state examination, set test using fact, short blessed test or clock drawing test is used. Risk factors advanced age, chemical imbalances, family history of AD or Down syndrome, genetic predisposition, a polypoprotein E, environmental agents such as herpes virus, metal or toxic waste, previous head injury, female sex, ethnicity or race. Note that African American and Hispanic people are at an increased risk for the development of AD. Expected findings each client's Alzheimer's disease progression may be distinct. The stages and manifestations do not have a universal scale. Laboratory tests No specific lab test can definitively diagnose AD. Several lab tests can rule out other causes of dementia. A genetic test for the presence of a polypoprotein can determine if there is an increased risk of AD, but it does not specifically diagnose AD. The presence of the protein increases the likelihood that dementia is due to AD. Diagnostic procedures There is no definitive diagnostic procedure except the brain tissue examination upon death. Magnetic resonance imaging, computed tomography imaging, computed axial tomography scan, positron emission tomography scan and electroencephalogram may be performed to rule out other possible causes of findings. A lumbar puncture may be performed for laboratory testing of cerebral spinal fluid for soluble beta-protein precursor. The presence of low levels of 
SBPP, supports the diagnosis of AD. Patient-centered care nursing care. Assess cognitive status, memory, judgment and personality changes. Initiate bowel and bladder program based on a set schedule. Encourage the client and family to participate in an AD support group. Provide a safe environment. Frequent monitoring, visual checks. Keep client from stairs, elevators, exits. Remove or secure dangerous items in the client's environment. Provide frequent walks to reduce wandering. Maintain a sleeping schedule and monitor for irregular sleeping patterns. Provide verbal and non-verbal ways to communicate with the client. Offer snacks or finger foods if the client is unable to sit for long periods of time. Check skin weekly for breakdown. Provide cognitive stimulation. Offer varied environmental stimulation such as walks, music, craft activities. Keep a structured environment and introduce change gradually, such as the client's daily routine or a room change. Use a calendar to assist with orientation. Use short directions when explaining an activity or care the client needs, such as a bath. Be consistent and repetitive. Use therapeutic touch. Provide memory training. Reminisce with the client about the past. Use memory techniques such as making lists and rehearsing. Stimulate memory by repeating the client's last statement. Avoid overstimulation. Keep noise and clutter to a minimum and avoid crowds. Promote consistency by placing commonly used objects in the same location and using a routine schedule. Reality orientation. Easily viewed clock and single day calendar. Pictures of family and pets. Frequent reorientation to time, place and person. Validation therapy is effective for later stages. Acknowledge the client's feelings. Don't argue with the client. This will lead to the client becoming upset. Reinforce and use repetitive actions or ideas cautiously. Promote self-care as long as possible. Assist with activities of daily living as appropriate. Speak directly to the client in short, concise sentences. Reduce agitation with the use of calm, redirecting statements. Provide a diversion. Provide a routine toileting schedule. Medications. Most medications for clients who have dementia attempt to target behavioral and emotional problems. These medications include antipsychotics, antidepressants and anxiolytics. Closely monitor clients receiving these medications for adverse effects. AD medications temporarily slow the course of the disease and do not work for all clients. Pharmacotherapeutics is based on the theory that AD is a result of depleted levels of the enzyme acetyltransferase, which is necessary to produce the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Benefits for clients who do respond to medication include improvements in cognition, behavior and function. If a client fails to improve with one medication, a trial of one of the other medications is warranted. Donapazil prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine, ACH, which increases the amount of ACH available. This results in increased nerve impulses at the nerve sites. Memantine is the first of a new classification of medications with a low to moderate affinity. It blocks nerve cell damage caused by excess glutamate. It has been shown to reduce client deterioration. Memantine may be given in conjunction with donepazil. Cholinesterase inhibitors help slow this process. Nursing actions. Observe for frequent stools or upset stomach. Monitor for dizziness and headache. The client can feel lightheaded or have an unsteady gait. Use caution when administering this medication to clients who have asthma or COPD as lung problems can worsen. Therapeutic procedures. Alternative therapy. Estrogen therapy for females can prevent Alzheimer's disease but it is not useful in decreasing the effects of existing dementia. Ginkgo biloba, a herbal product taken to increase memory and blood circulation, can cause a variety of adverse effects and medication interactions. If a client is using ginkgo biloba or other nutritional supplements, that information should be shared with providers. Complementary medicine. Massage the client before bedtime to reduce stress and promote sleep. Essential oils, lavender, bergamot, 
can be used to promote relaxation and assist with sleeping. Interprofessional care. Encourage the client and family to seek legal counsel regarding advanced directives, guardianship or durable medical power of attorney. Refer the client and family to social services and case managers for possible adult day care facilities or long-term care facilities. Refer the client and family to the Alzheimer's Association and community outreach programs. This can include family support groups, in-home care or respite care. Review the resources available for the family as the client's health declines. Include long-term care options. A variety of home care and community resources, such as respite care, can be available to the family in many areas of the country. Some respite care allows the client to remain at home rather than in a facility. Client education. Refer to social services and case managers for long-term home management, Alzheimer's Association, community outreach programs and support groups. Educate family caregivers about illness, methods of care, medications and adaptation of the home environment. Provide information about care for seizures that can happen late in the disease. Provide strategies to reduce caregiver stress. Home safety measures. Remove scatter rugs. Install door locks that cannot be easily opened and place alarms on doors. Keep a lock on the water heater and thermostat and keep the water temperature at a safe level. Provide good lighting, especially on stairs. Install handrails on stairs and mark step edges with colored tape. Place the mattress on the floor. Remove clutter and clear hallways for walking. Secure electrical cords to baseboards. Keep cleaning supplies in locked cupboards. Install handrails in the bathroom, at the bedside and in the tub. Place a shower chair in the tub. Wear a medical ID bracelet if living at home with a caregiver. Participate in an exercise program to maintain mobility. That ends the lesson on Alzheimer's disease. Check out our other nursing videos to help make studying easier. Also see below for useful links that take you to free NCLEX style quizzes, nursing study guides and more.